सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मा विषा वह ओं शाति 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 सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरामो राजमणि सदा विजयते राम रमेश भजे राहता निशाचर चम राय तस्म नम रायण परतर राम से दासोस्म्यहम रामे चित्तल सदा मे भो राम मुद्धर समस्त जन कल्याणे निरत करुणय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओं आप्याय मंगा वाणश्चक्षुश्रोत्रमथो बलमिंद्रियाणी चर्वाणी सर्व ब्रह्म उपनिषद माहम ब्रह्म निराकुरिया मा मा ब्रह्म निराकोत्कमस्वराकरण मे अस्तु तदात्म निरतेय उपनिषत्सु धर्मा ते मयि सन्तु ते मयि सन्तु ओं शाति 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 यन्मनसा न मनुते ये नुर्मनो मत तदे ब्रह्म विधि नेदम यदिदुपासते हरिओं इन द लास्ट सेशन वी हेड सीन द मंत्र दट वी जस्ट चैंटेड यन मनसा न मनुते ये नुर्मनोमतम तदे ब्रह्म विधि नेदम यदिदम उपासते सो दीज सेट ऑफ मंत्र हैव द सेम थीम सेम आइडिया दट इनिशियली ए पर्टिक्युलर थिंग वॉज पॉइंटेड आउट to be brahma meditate upon speech as brahman meditate upon mind as brahman so with this the sadhaka did upasana and got the result of what upasana should have given in the sense that mind has become more accepting it has become accommodating Okay. So that is the main result of upasana chitta vishalata vishalata means mind doesn't you know physically become bigger or something upasaka's mind becomes so quiet that is able to accept more things of this world is accommodating to all different types of experiences once that has happened now the same upanishad comes and says understand that brahman whom you are meditating upon as this mind to be free from all conditionings that is why that phrase comes again and again tadeva brahmatvam vidhi nedam yadidam upasate know that alone to be brahman know that to be the true nature of brahman devoid of all conditionings don't remain stuck at limited expression of brahma okay so this was the main idea there and we had seen several other pointers in and through this teaching before saying that you are not the mind or before saying mind becomes an object of knowledge of brahman bhagwan shankara acharya ji elaborates what is this mind right we had seen the example that this is the side benefit main purpose of this mantra is to say that i am different from this mind and i am unconditioned brahman is unconditioned 
it has nothing to do with this mind but in and through this explanation mind is also elaborated definition of mind is elaborated so that helps us in our sadhana to appreciate what is this mind so bhagwan said one thought is not called mind he quoted a upanishad mantra he said flow of thought together is called as mind so there will be different types of thought which will keep rising our sadhana is to make sure that only non bothering thoughts are in our mind klishta and aklishta vritti klishta means those thoughts which are giving us some kind of trouble klesha that is where the word klishta comes aklishta means pleasant thoughts so all virtues and values will fall under that category aklishta if they are there it is as though this mind is not even noticed so in that way this portion was elaborated and we had seen several other pointers also that um, every object becomes known only when it is pervaded by the mind so we don't know the world directly we know the world only as thoughts if that is the case then bauddha darshan acharyas and vedanta acharya acharyas will say why have so much so much insistence on this point that world is outside logically we cannot even establish it right entire jagrat avastha to prove that it is outside there is no example which is available but there is an example available to show that without actually being outside it can appear outside what is example dream example so it's a different avastha right jagrat avastha and swapna avastha so you can take example from swapna avastha to show that jagrat is just like dream and as we had seen last time the main implication of this point is that whatever insistence we might have on outside world that should become mellower with this understanding that jagat is nothing but vrittis okay that much part if we can appreciate over here in other places more elaboration will be there okay so dakshina murti sotram the first verse is the main idea over here vishwam darpana drishyamana nagari tulyam nijantargatam this jagat is not appearing outside it is appearing inside and this mind along with all other thoughts are appearing in atma okay so that was the idea here now we will see um numbering might be changed this one is fifth so it is 6 7th and 8th okay sorry about the number there these three verses we will see together yachakshushana pashyatim yachakshushana pashyatim yena chakshum shi pashyatim yena chakshum shi pashyatim tadeva brahmatvam vidhim tadeva brahmatvam vidhim नेदम यदिदम उपासते नेदम यदिदम उपासते यच्छ्रोत्रेण न शृणोति यच्छ्रोत्रेण न शृणोति येन श्रोत्रमिदम श्रुतम येन श्रोत्रमिदम श्रुतम तदेव ब्रह्मत्वं विद्धि तदेव ब्रह्मत्वं विद्धि नेदम यदिदम उपासते नेदम यदिदम उपासते यत्प्राणेन न प्राणिति यत्प्राणेन न प्राणिति येन प्राणः प्रणीयते येन प्राणः प्रणीयते तदेव ब्रह्मत्वं विद्धि तदेव ब्रह्मत्वं विद्धि 
नेदम यदिदम उपासते नेदम यदिदम उपासते सेम आइडिया नाउ एंड सेम स्टाइल ऑफ एक्सप्लेनेशन आल्सो मीनिंग व्हेन भगवान शंकराचार्य जी इज गोइंग टू इलैबोरेट दिस वर्स ही इज गोइंग टू फर्स्ट डिफाइन व्हाट इज आई जस्ट लाइक हाउ ही डिफाइन स्पीच हाउ ही डिफाइन माइंड now he is going to define first what do we mean by chakshu so in and through that lot of depth comes in other text so when we study drug drushya viveka that first mantra itself rupam drushyam lochanam drak so all of that elaboration will come from these bhashyas so what does this mantra say brahman is that which cannot be seen by our eyes यक्षुषा न पश्यति ये न चक्षुंशी पश्यति ब्रह्मन इज दैट विच मेक्स आई एस इज ऑब्जेक्ट एबिलिटी ऑफ द आई यू नो इट इज सेड चक्षु वृत्ति इन भाष्य वी विल सी आई ऑल्सो इज एबल टू सी आउटसाइड वर्ल्ड बिकॉज ऑफ ए पर्टिक्युलर थॉट ओके meaning that consciousness through the mind through the eyes goes out and pervades the world or pervades that object so that pervasion or pervading is called as chakshu vritti but in simple words i becomes an object of knowledge for brahman okay so eyes cannot see brahman all these mantras might look straight forward but in spite of these mantras being there there can be some erroneous notions in sadhaka's mind one erroneous notion is that some day we'll be able to discover consciousness through science i've heard this eh? many sadhaka share also they say we have dis- discovered so many things technology is there and it is advancing so fast maybe today we don't know about consciousness and some day we'll be able to discover consciousness the only question vedanta would ask is okay let us say some day we will discover consciousness how are we going to know it right are we going to know it through some some instrument you know which might be very sophisticated instrument the point is if it's an instrument there has to be some sense organ behind it if you say it's a microscope there has to be eye behind it no matter what name you give to that instrument if we are using sense organ to know that object we say it is not consciousness why because consciousness cannot be seen through sense organs and it can never become an object it cannot be known through mind also right so we cannot use other methods to know the nature of atma that is why praman vichara becomes very important for which prameya for which object what is the right means of knowledge if i need to know something of the world outside then sense organs and instruments they will become valid means of knowledge but if i want to know the nature of seer which is different from this world which is akhila dharam that substratum in which the world is appearing i cannot use my sense organs i cannot use any other instrument you know the truth is not determined with majority means one should not say oh everybody is saying that some day we will discover consciousness so maybe it is possible truth is determined through pramana and through logic which establishes this pramana we don't have to go around convincing everybody huh? but if we say we are students of vedanta then this clarity should come that how am i going to know nature of brahma but most importantly if it is ananda swarupa 
it becomes a purushartha of life this point is there in vidwan manoranjani tika of vedanta sara satchit ananda right ananda when that word is elaborated acharya says because ananda is what we are seeking in life it becomes very important that we know the nature of atma well we know how to know it we also know what are the erroneous notions about it right so that we don't fall under some erroneous notion category so these mantras they might look very simple but if we enquire a little more we realize there could be a chance that we are still in our older understanding of consciousness and how to know this atma okay then comes shrotrendriya first was i then is ears yat shrotrena na shrunoti brahman is that which cannot be heard through ears so if i say i have heard anahata nad he look at what this mantra is saying yat shrotrena na shrunoti that nad or whatever i have heard is not brahman yat shrotrena na shrunoti yena shrotram idam shrutam brahman is that because of which hearing is possible tadeva brahma tvam vidhi that brahman alone know it to be yourself tadeva brahma tvam iti vidhi na idam yadidam upasate so previous upasana could have been shrotra meditate upon this ear as brahma and some similarity would be there just like we saw for every substratum of upasana last one yat pranena na praniti yena prana praniyate brahman is that which doesn't become object of nose or smell so prana word over here is not referring to prana apana vaya vayu udana prana apana samana yana and udana all the five pancha vayus which are there prana word is not referring to that why because pranas don't have anything as their object right pranas don't have anything as their object so prana word here should refer refer, refer to nose which is our sense organ now this point would not have become clear without bhashya previously when prana word came bhagwan shankaracharya said when the puro paksha said let us change this word prana to ghrana so pranasya prana bhagwan said no with the direct meaning of the word prana when you are getting you know coherent meaning you don't have to see any other meaning but in this mantra he says the word prana means ghrana means it is nose brahman cannot be smelt yena prana praniyate brahman is that because of which fragrance or smelling is possible that brahma know it to be yourself not this limited expression of brahma so bhashya will directly read yat chakshushan apashyati na vishaye karoti antakarna vritti sanyuktena lokah okay first is defining what is this chakshu okay but before that he says yat chakshusha na pashyati brahman is that which doesn't become an object of eyes na vishaye karoti eyes cannot make brahman as its vishaya antakarna sanyukt antakarna vritti sanyuktena lokah means eyes are able to function only when it is in conjunction with mind such a mind, such a instrument this eyes which work only with conjunction with mind these eyes cannot make brahma as its vishaya okay that is the meaning over here but yena chakshum shi pashyati brahman is that by which eyes become seen so what is chakshum shi chakshum shi means plural is there ha huh? 
we say there are only two eyes, right? But why plural is used? So Bhagwan says when we say chakshumshi, we are referring referring to the different types of vrittis which are created by this eyes. Vrittis means thoughts. So these eyes are able to create different different kind of thoughts. So what are those thoughts that you will see in Drukdrishya Viveka? One is of color, Neela Pita. One is yellow color, blue color, red color. So important thing to note here is with every color, different thought gets created in the mind. That is why plural is used. Antak Karna Vritti Bheda Bhinna Chakshu Vritti Hi. One is mind is needed. Antak Karna Vritti Bheda Bhinna means different types of thoughts are there. Along with that, the thoughts created by the eye, those are also there. That is called as Chakshu. Okay, so first one is colors, Neela Pita, Sthula Sukshma. Sthula Sukshma means shape, that which is very gross or that which is fine. Sthula Sukshma. Raswa Dhirga means shortness and tallness, height. All of that is illumined by our physical eyes. But these eyes create a thought about these things and that thought is illumined by Brahma. Although when we see the world, we don't see it in this detail. Huh? We don't say, oh, now thought is getting created of this chair, of this color. We'll be very slow in just turning our head then. Why? Because one by one thought has to get created. But it is happening so seamlessly Bhagwan Shankaracharya is only putting it in front of us. You know, he says, this is how this eye functions and through the eye, shift attention to Atma. Okay, this is Brahmaji's style of teaching. Huh? What did Brahmaji teach Indra and Virochana? He said, whatever is seated in the left eye or right eye, that is Brahma. Only that much. Whatever is seated in the right eye, that is Brahma. Now you go and figure out what is the meaning of Brahmaji's teaching. He said Indra and Virochana. So that story also will come in Bhagwan's Bhashya. But the main point is through the eye, shifting attention to that consciousness which is illumining these eyes. Okay. Chaitanya Atma Jyotisha Vishaye Karoti Vyapnoti. What is the meaning of the word Pashyati? Now you see every word from mantra is opened up. Huh? So, Yat Chakshushana Pashyati, Yena Chakshunshi Pashyati. So, Brahman is that which sees the eyes. What does the word seeing mean over here? Pashyati means seeing. He says, Chaitanya Atma Jyotisha Vishaye Karoti Vyapnoti. So, with that light of consciousness, the ability to see that is illumined. And all these vrittis, all these thoughts become an object of knowledge of Atma. Vishay karoti, vyapnoti, tadeva ityadi purvavat. The later part of that mantra, he says, I don't have to elaborate because we have just seen it before. Tadeva brahmatvam vidhi, nedam yadidam upasate. So this mantra was the sixth one. Next, for years it was said. So same style now. Brahman doesn't become object of years. But first, Bhagwan Shankaracharya will define what do we mean by years. Okay, so yat shrotrena na shrunoti dig devata adishthitena akasha karyena mano vritti sanyuktena na vishaya karoti lokaha. So what is ears? Dig Devata Adishthanena. Dig Devata Adishthitena. Means ears we know is formed from Sattvic aspect of space element. 
ये तत्व बोध अभी हैव सीन फ्रॉम द सात्विक एस्पेक्ट ऑफ स्पेस एलिमेंट ईयर्स आर फॉर्म और ईयर्स आर एमर्ज आउट ऑफ एंड स्पेस एलिमेंट हैज अंशियंट प्रिंसिपल प्रिसाइडिंग ओवर इट राइट एनी थिंग विच इज भौतिक इट हैज अंशियंट प्रिंसिपल प्रिसाइडिंग ओवर इट and even in our physical body in adhyatma also that same devata will preside over that sense organ so space is an element and the sentient principle presiding over space together is called as dig devata right so in our physical body also that sense organ which is born from space element that sense organ also is presided over by dig devata eyes for that matter illumine rupa you know it illumines form now in this creation we have surya bhagwan right who illumines all you know objects of this world so we say that gaseous you know gaseous uh, ball of fire is adibhuta it is you know material it is physical but there is a sentient principle presiding over that gaseous mass that you know sentient principle we worship as surya bhagwan so devata means that whatever is material thing it is not only inert object there is a sentient principle presiding over it so that sentient entity is surya devata yesterday we celebrated makara sankranti so first conviction we should have is surya is not only gaseous ball of fire it's a sentient devata that is why presiding deity of our eyes is surya bhagwan chakshushah surya so like this there are similarities huh? whatever happens in microcosm same thing happens in macrocosm so for years it is dig devata so what are the dig devatas it is said there are 8 or sometimes it is said there are 10 dig devatas so each direction has one presiding deity taking care of that direction okay so here we have west direction is varuna bhagwan north northwest is vayu bhagwan kuber bhagwan is northern direction that is why lot of vastu shastra and all has lot of its practices coming from these points so if it's a business oriented uh, you know shop or something they say the business has to be done turned in the northern direction even if we are designing home uh, for that matter where should be where should be the uh, puja room so that also comes from here north east direction is ishana bhagwan's direction is ishwara's direction is north east so there are some similarities which are drawn from these things eastern direction is indra bhagwan south east is agni agni devata and southern direction is yama south west is niraruta this mantra comes in sandhya vandanam also huh? or in puja also we chant sometimes pratichche dishe varunaya namaha vayave dishe vayave chanamaha udichche dishe somaya chanamaha ishane dishe ishwaraya chanamaha prachche dishe indraya chanamaha agne dishe agne chanamaha dakshinaya dishe yamaya chanamaha nirarutte che dishe nirarutte chanamaha urdhvaya che dishe brahmane chanamaha adhraya dishe anantaya chanamaha means i bow down to all the devatas who are presiding and surrounding me while doing this sandhya vandanam because space is not only a element there is a sentient principle presiding over that element and the sense organ which is born from that space element unmanifest space that is our shrotrendriya so vishaya of shrotrendriya is sound so sound overly depends upon space 
that is why adhisthana of dig devatas are very much required so all these points are mentioned here dig devata adhisthitena akasha karyan so it is formed out of sattvic aspect of akasha what is formed shrotrendriya is formed so see tattva bodha knowledge now will help over here to understand bhashya if we have the question why are we studying prakarana granthas this is the reason why we are studying prakarana granthas prakarana grantha helps to understand bhashya bhashya helps to understand upanishad mantra manovritti sanyuktena na vishayi karoti means if ears have to illumine something mind has to be there behind it live example is sitting in vedanta class right there might be portions where sound is coming speaker is on laptop is there it is hitting the ear also but if mind is not there behind it it is as though that object has not made any impression okay so this bhagwan says is the definition of ear what is the first one it has dig devata as the presiding deity first definition second is it is result of akasha formed out of sattvic aspect of akasha pancha mahabhuta and it is able to function only when mind is there behind it manovritti sanyuktena that is our shrotrendriya such shrotrendriya cannot make brahman as its vishaya na vishaya karoti means it doesn't make brahman as its vishaya yatra shrotram or yena shrotram idam shrutam but brahman is that because of which shrotrendra is able to hear illumine this different types of sounds okay yat prasiddham chaitanya atma jyotisha vishayi krutam tadeva ityadi purovat the later part of this mantra we don't have to elaborate because it has been elaborated before but i hope these pointers just give more insight into the bhashya that when we say dig devata why did dig devata come in the first place because space element is pervaded or presided over by dig devatas and ears are formed out of sattvic aspect and application of that we see in all other upavedas right so jyotish shastra um shilpa shastra city planning all these things are based upon lot of these points we are not experts in that field but we should just appreciate that this is a science by itself and it comes from lot of deep thinking by none other than our rishis okay so this was not written by any other person these were revelations to our rishis so now the third mantra said or the eighth mantra it said yat pranena na praniti so what does the word prana mean bhagwan says first translate the word prana as ghrana ghrana means nose or ability to smell not physical nose eh? ability to smell why he says because pranas don't have any object eyes might have rupa as its object ears have sound as its object so what does what do pranas have as their object so we cannot take the meaning of prana as pancha prana we have to take it as ability to smell yat pranena means ghanena then definition of ghana so first he says parthivena previously for shrotrendra it was said akasha karyena but for smell it is parthivena means ability to smell comes from the sattvic aspect of earth element okay that is why the object of smell is fragrance there is a relationship you know between the element from which sense organs are born and those sense organs will take only that particular object no matter how hard we try sound cannot come through nose you know they are called as 
karma yogis all sense organs very very focused you know just go to that particular thing where they have to put their attention in this is just a metaphorical way huh? sense organs don't think in that way but they don't keep anything whatever has come that they will give it to mind tongue doesn't keep anything although we feel like it you know it is going to stay here forever this is no 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 it will just come and the taste will go to the mind so parthivena over here means it is formed from satvik aspect of earth element that is why the word parthivena is used prithivi means earth parthiva also means earth that which is coming out from earth is called as parthivena nasika putantara vasthitena antakarana pranavrutibhyam so if you want to find the location of ghranendriya he says it is behind these nostrils that much details bhagwan is giving over here shankaracharya ji he says this is what we are referring to over here antakarana it functions only when mind is there that prana cannot make brahman as its vishaya that smell cannot be making brahman as its vishaya gandavan na vishaye karoti you know it doesn't make brahman as its object just like any other fragrance yena chaitanya atma jyotisha avabhasayati avabhasayati twena swa vishayam prati pranah praniyate but it is that consciousness by which alone knows or we have the ability to smell means every interaction with this world can be divinized if knowledge is clear somebody can just be doing pranayama or just you know breathing only but if that connection is made that breathing is possible because of brahma then one can shift attention from breath to brahma okay yena pranah praniyate tadeva ityadi sarvam samanam all of it which is said later is the same which is followed before now i'll put forth one point which um, if you have studied bhagavad gita you will enjoy this if not also i will refer which point i am you know trying to elaborate over here and this we can do for all other mantras also which were there but in the interest of time we will do it only for one mantra in bhagavad gita 7 chapter bhagwan tells to arjuna arjuna now i have spoken sufficiently about this mind this individual you know jiva i have elaborated until six chapters now you listen about me bhagwan krishna is telling arjuna now i will tell about what is my nature if you have to recognize me where you should recognize so one of the vibhuti of bhagwan he says punyo gandha prithivyam cha tejas chasmi vibhavasau the first quarter is what we are interested seven chapter ninth verse bhagwan says know me as the fragrance in the earth when it rains the first time that sweet fragrance we get from this earth bhagwan says that fragrance i am and what did this upanishad mantra say yat pranena yat pranena न प्राणिति ये न प्राण प्रणीयते एंड प्राण भगवान शंकराचार्य सेड स्मेल सो ब्रह्मन इज दैट विच कैन नॉट बी स्मेल्ट दैट इज व्हाट इज सेड इन केन उपनिषद एंड ओवर हियर भगवान कृष्ण से इन भगवत गीता पुण्यो गंध पृथ्व्याम च अर्जुन रिकॉग्नाइज मी एज दैट फ्रेग्रेंस फ्रॉम दिस अर्थ so how do you reconcile both these statements i will give one perspective here you can find other statements this is how mananam will happen for shrotrendriya chakshurendriya where are there where are they contradicting as though 
आई होप द कॉन्ट्रोडिक्शन इज क्लियर फर्स्ट है इन भगवत गीता भगवान से नोमी एस यू नो द स्वीट फ्रेग्रेंस ऑफ दिस अर्थ मीन्स आई बिकम एन ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ यू नो घ्राणे इंद्रिया वेर एस इन केनोपनिषद इट इज सेट ब्रह्मन के नॉट बिकम ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ सेंस ऑर्गन इन पर्टिक्युलर घ्राण इंद्रिय फॉर दिस पर्टिक्युलर मंत्र सो द वे टू रेकनसाइल दिस इज दिस फर्स्ट उपदेश है पुण्योगंध पृथ्वीयाम च इज उपासना वो अर्जुन वॉट एवर यू सी इन दिस क्रिएशन ऑल ऑफ दैट इज कंडीशन एक्सिस्टन्स and because i am the akhila dhar i am the substratum of this entire creation you can take a particular part and then and then meditate upon that part as me so when bhagwan krishna is saying this it is not that he has forgotten about his nature as brahma punyogandha prithivyam cha when he says it is not that that mantra is not referring to brahma but when you come to keno upanishad that mantra is referring to brahma so you know there is only one reality how to reach that reality the first step is upasana second step is jnana so upasana step says in that fragrance do brahma buddhi that is true brahman doesn't become object of sense organ you just do brahma buddhi in spite of that bhagwan what will happen this mind will get purified we will see divinity in all our transactions that great result will come then when mind has gotten purified come to kena upanishad and one should not wait don't say when my mind gets purified i will come to kena upanishad no what it means is when mind gets purified this meaning will reveal to us depth of this meaning will open up more when mind has gotten purified that is the only meaning it is not to stop us from studying upanishads so upanishad mantra what is it saying know that nature brahman to be unconditioned yat pranena na praniti yena prana praniyate that brahman is unconditioned so it doesn't have conditioning of fragrance also gandha there is no conditioning gandha is a conditioning on consciousness so keno upanishad mantra says this consciousness is without any attributes it has no conditionings that brahman you are tadev brahmatvam iti vidhi na idam यत इदम उपासते नॉट दिस गंध विच यू आर वर्शिपिंग एज ब्रह्म वाई बिकॉज भगवदगीता मंत्र सेट पुण्यो गंध पृथ्वी आप भगवान कृष्ण इज टेलिंग अर्जुन अर्जुन वर्शिप और नो मी एज दिस फ्रेग्रेंस इन दिस अर्थ जस्ट डू इट वाई बिकॉज आई एम सींग इट उपासना इज ऑलवेज श्रद्धा प्रधान ज्ञानम इज प्रमाण प्रधान प्रमाण मीन्स वैलिड मीन्स ऑफ नॉलेज दैट डिसाइड्स हाउ नॉलेज शुड बी आई हैव नो चॉइस अबाउट अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट ऑब्जेक्ट एज पर माई यू नो इंटलेक्शन वॉट एवर प्रमाण रिवील्स दैट इज हाउ दैट ऑब्जेक्ट विल बी नोन टू मी okay so i hope this example is clear but you can reflect upon this example also if it has still not become clear about why these two are contradicting in the first place and what are other contradictions we might find in upanishads and bhagavad gita clear knowledge of upanishad mantra is liberation huh? that is what भगवान कृष्ण सेड इन भगवत गीता श्रुते वि प्रतिपन्नाते यदा स्थास्यति निश्चला समाधव वचला बुद्धि तदा योगम अवाप्सिसि व्हेन उपनिषद मंत्रस सीम टू बी सीमलेस 
in my understanding that seamless understanding of our nature as brahma that is liberation okay so we have completed the first khanda the first chapter of kena upanishad it's very fulfilling when you complete some portion okay this is our first reading of this text some of you several times but we have to keep reflecting upon it now the second portion is very beautiful okay this is the introduction to the second chapter now just like we have a uh, different degrees right you go to engineering college four years you have to learn and if you are doing some phd or something five years you have to struggle very hard and then before you have to graduate before you graduate you have to answer something called as your defense there will be a thesis committee five six of them will be there and everything you say they'll try to question and they'll try to challenge you to make sure that you have actually understood this subject right if there is some shortcoming they will give feedback and says go back work on this portion and come back again well for a defense presentation that is not what somebody wants defense means final it is only i am sharing the results everything else is taken care before so in adhyatma vidya also before the student graduates teacher wants to make sure that the student has actually understood what is nature of brahma so to test his understanding he is doing something called as sthula nikhanana nyaya sthula nikhanana nyaya means shaking the pole by yourself before it is firmly grounded right if you have to put a pole in the ground what will we do we'll dig a hole and then hammer it down in that in that ground but to make sure that it has actually gotten grounded you will try to shake it a little bit if it still shakes means it needs more hammering if it is firm then it is all good you know why that shaking is done by by the person only so it is better to shake it myself and get to know whether it is firmly grounded rather than having it shaken by somebody else you know some storm comes or some other person comes who just tries to shake it and take it out so is better than that is i myself do it and if there is some shortcoming i hammer it right away so the teacher wants to make sure that before the student goes out in the world and starts teaching vedanta sharing vedanta with others or even for his own self teacher wants to make sure that student has really understood vedanta rather than getting shaken by the world he says i will only shake the student now you know maybe holding his choti <laughs> shaking it and saying this is what if you think you have understood then you have not understood it's a very beautiful verse bhagwan shankaracharya has written elaborate bhashya he says this is the compassion of the teacher why bhagwan says the teacher wants to make sure three things are merging together what are the three things one is what upanishads are saying okay what is the nature of brahma what upanishads are saying that is the first thing which should come what is the teacher's anubhava right now how has the guru understood this truth that is the second point which will match the first thing upanishads have said the same thing teacher has understood and now he wants the student also to meet at the same point in order to make sure that these three things are meeting together bhagwan shankaracharya says the next portion of kena upanishad is elaborated upanishadic teaching teacher's conviction and student's conviction should be the same thing and the interesting thing is the teacher cannot you know go into the student's mind and um, you know figure out what is going on 
in terms of what has a student understood. It will only be taught based on how the student is expressing. Okay, so if the teacher finds that while describing nature of Brahma, these were the words that the student used, then the teacher will say that, you know, this is not how you should think. But Kenopanishad Rishi is so compassionate, he doesn't even wait for the student. He says, if you think Brahman in this way, then there is still more to be understood. Okay. If you think I know Brahman very well, then, oh student, there is more to be learnt about. Okay, so let us see the introductory bhashana. We have just five minutes. Okay, let us see this. Evam heyo pade vipari tastvam. Evam heyo pade vipari tastvam. Atma brahmeti pratyayitaha. Atma Brahmeti Pratyayitaha Shishyaha Shishyaha Ahameva Brahmeti Sushtu Veda Aham Iti Ahameva Brahma Iti Sushtu Veda Aham Iti Ma Grunhiyat Iti Ma Grunhiyat Iti Ashayat Aha Acharyaha Ashayat Aha Acharyaha Shishya buddhi vichalan artham, Shishya buddhi vichalan artham, Yadi ityadi, Yadi ityadi, Nan vishtaiva, Nan vishtaiva, Suveda aham iti, Suveda aham iti, Nishchita pratipattihi, Nishchita pratipattihi. Now you see the mastery of Bhagwan Shankaracharya Ji. Whatever was described, whatever was discussed in entire first chapter, eight mantras. Bhagwan Shankaracharya Ji is recapping in four words. He says, What is it that we have discussed? We have discussed about nature of Atma. What is nature of Atma? Heyo Padeya Viparitaha. Anya devatad viditat, ato aviditat adhi. So, Brahman is that which is different from vidita, known, and it is different from unknown also. And Bhagwan had mentioned what this means is Brahman cannot be given up. It is our own swarupa, nor it needs to be taken up from somewhere. This is atma which is of this kind, heyo padeya viparitaha, tvam. That Atma you are, and that Atma alone is Brahma. This Atma, which is, which cannot be given up, need not be taken up. That Brahma, that Atma alone is infinite. Pratyayitaha Shishya. This is the name of the student. That student who has been taught in this way. Pratyayitaha Shishya. So entire first section, if you have understood, then this should be our name. Pratyayitaha Shishyaha. How have you understood nature of Atma? Heyo Padeya Viparitaha. Anya Devatad Viditat Atho Aviditat Adhi. But not as somebody or something different from me, as me myself. But again, not some little Atma shining you know, in this body, but that Atma which is infinite. Such a student, there is a chance that he might come and say, Ahameva Brahma iti, Sushtu Veda Aham iti. He has understood that I am Brahma, but he is saying that I have understood that Brahma very well. Sushtu Veda Aham iti. This Brahman I have understood very well. One should not think in this way. Ma grunniyat iti ashayat aha acharya. Keeping in mind that the student should not think in this way, the teacher is now telling the later portion of Upanishad. Shishya buddhi vichalanartham. 
to shake the understanding of the student and to make sure that he has actually understood this truth as it has to be understood you know strike when the iron is hot if the student has come to the teacher so he has that shishyatva inside just studied vedanta means all knowledge is fresh now is the right time to remove any erroneous notion because now the student is going to reflect on that teaching he is going to share that teaching or whatever he decides to do with it and imagine if the first brick itself is little tilted you know when we build a structure the first layer itself if it is tilted the entire structure will be tilted so his understanding has to be in the right place now there is a purva paksha opponent who is very you know having lot of compassion towards that student he says nanu ishta eva su ved suveda aham iti nischita pratipatti hi he says isn't it desirable that the student should know brahman very well after so much of effort he has come to this point he has done shravanam and now he is saying i have understood brahman well isn't this desirable why does this te- teacher have to go and shake his understanding right now so bhagwan shankaracharya ji says satyam what you are saying is true but there are several other things that the teacher wants to make sure that these misunderstandings or some kind of erroneous understanding of brahma is not lingering in the student's mind okay with this bhagwan shankaracharya ji will introduce us to the next portion okay story will also come of indra and virochana that we will see in the next session om purnamad purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om there was a question which was submitted uh, last time on the google form i'll just take it quickly this question is about the topic that we saw of how the mind pervades every object sadaka says when i think about the mind my thought directly takes me to brain where i think all the processing is happening but i am not sure if this is the right way to think i was thinking more related to myself as an entity when i extrapolate it to the world outside what does it mean for the mind to pervade everything does it mean we only experience the world when our mind is active or each sentient entity has a mind which is linked to other sentient entity also what about non sentient entity they do not reflect or they do not have a mind hence they cannot experience the world they cannot reflect the light of brahman yet they are in brahman then how does one view their existence good first part of the question mind and brain it does look very confusing um and also because we have you know heard so many things even the modern science they say that we can manipulate this brain meaning if we give some dose suddenly there will be excitement you give another anesthesia or something this mind will go to sleep actually speaking it is you know one way to look at it means one cannot say that because this is said in in that way that you know substance can manipulate the mind there is no entity called as mind different from this brain one cannot say that what is happening there is the thought or this subtle aspect of this mind that is expressing in this physical body and the first place for it to express is the brain 
right? So when we are happy, they say there is some particular hormone that gets secreted. Right? Dopamine, serotonin, all these names are there, you know, these different hormones. Now that secretion of hormone is happening in the brain. That is not subtle. But when we say mind, it is referring to that subtle thought. Okay, which doesn't become, which doesn't get expressed in this physical body. That is why when this jiva departs from this physical body, what is left beha behind is brain. Why? Because brain was part of physical body. And what is carried to the next sharira is this mind. Mind means that subtle part which is having all the samskaras and everything. Right? That is why we say whatever investment is done in sadhana to purify this mind, that continues across several lives. So there could be several reasons why we feel that mind and brain is the same thing. One of the reasons I just pointed out, because we feel brain can be manipulated by these substances, uh, you know, medicines or whatever it is. But that is only related to this brain. Okay. What does it mean that mind pervades everything? What it means is, no object can become known to us if thought of that object is not getting formed. Right? For example, for the last one hour, I've been looking at this camera. But my attention is not on camera. Right? So until I pay attention to this camera and then say that, oh, this is of this manufacturer and so on, knowledge of this camera is not taking place. Even though I'm looking at it for so long. Right? So that is what it means. World is known to us only when a thought of that object takes place. Okay. So it could be any object. It has to become known to somebody. Then, then only one, we can prove the existence of that object. And that is the only way by which that object becomes known to us. Is individual mind linked to other minds? And mind is active or each sentient entity has a mind which is linked to other sentient entity. Not literally in that sense. All our minds are linked to the total mind. Right? Total mind is Bhagwan. To that total mind alone, all our minds are linked. Whatever the total mind decides has lot of power over what individual mind decides. That is why we say Samashti Sankalpa will prevail over Yashti Sankalpa. Right? Whatever has to happen in the totality that has more power because it is samashti. In our sadhana, we say hari icha balavan. Hari icha means what? Samashti icha. Whatever the totality decides, that alone will happen. We as individuals have limited freedom there. So, what is our role? Our role is to tune with that totality. And the best way to do that is to remove our individual ragadveshas, individual preferences. This is the simplest way. There is no other path that we can take. Tuning ourselves to that totality, making ourselves available to appreciate Bhagwan's plan. Planning still will be there from our side, but it will be with Bhagwan's approval. Karma Yoga means that in the beginning itself, this sadhaka tunes with totality. And he is ready to accept any result. Right? Because Bhagwan is going to decide the final result. Kartuhu ajnaya phalam praptite. Then why insist upon my result? This preparation is one part of Karma Yoga. 
right? Karma yoga has several facets to it. One facet is this. On the strength of this fact that there is a total mind, tuning with that total mind. In that way, we are connected. But all minds are connected with that totality. If you directly try to connect with other person's mind, you will be utterly frustrated. Right? Because everybody has their own minds. How are we trying to change somebody's mind, change somebody's you know, perspective? So best way is connect with that total mind, which is connected to that person's mind also. Right? So that is why we say, have Bhagwan in between all sambandhas with the world. Father, mother, you know, child and parent, whatever sambandhas we are having, between those sambandhas, keeping Bhagwan in between. Bhagwan, this is what I would desire to happen my child should think in this way, but I know we are connected through you, not directly. Okay, in that way, sentient entities are linked, not directly. What about non sentient ent entities? That is true because sentience is reflected only in Sattva Upadi. Right? Antak Karana is not expressing there, that is why. Consciousness is not reflected in that sentient world. But existence is very well expressing. Okay. So in that way, we should look at it. Sat aspect is manifested, but Chit aspect is not manifested. That is all. Doesn't mean it is absent. Right? Because if Sat is manifested, then Sat is there. And chit is not something different from sat, it is the same thing. So example given is, when you keep fire, on that fire you keep a um, container, in that container you put some water. From that fire to water, only heat gets transferred. Right? Although light is also there, as the nature of fire. The light doesn't get transferred to that water. So what is manifesting in that, in that water? We say only heat element of that fire is manifesting. Fire, uh, the water doesn't start blowing like that fire. So here also, consciousness is the same. So Satchit Ananda, they are not three different things. It is the same pure consciousness. But what is manifested is part of, you know, the nature of Brahma. Just like only heat got manifested, not the light. Here only Sat is getting manifested, not Chit and not Ananda. Okay. In the Upanishad mantra, what does Nedam Yadidam Upasate mean? Na idam is Guna Sandhi. Huh? <laughs> na idam became Nedam. Na idam Yat idam Upasate. Na idam means what you are worshipping as idam. Yat idam, that thing which you are worshipping as this. That this is not Brahman. Na idam yat idam upasate. Whatever is worshipped as idam, that idam is not the absolute nature of Brahman. This topic we had seen earlier. What is being negated is conditioned expression of Brahman. Okay, so in that way we should understand that. Na idam yat idam upasate. All right. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om